What's up, YouTube? Tenton here, and today we'll be discussing the next time on Death Battle between Heihachi from Tekken and Geese Howard from Fatal Fury. But before we discuss that, let us briefly discuss Doctor Doom vs. Lex. The analysis had some pretty good jokes. The Lutheran joke was very clever, and Boomstick still being 2D during the ending was a nice touch. Them using the same Doom ending quote was a bit odd, and the Trump joke was quite frankly cringe. But besides that, the analysis had a ton of fantastic editing. Nick is really a godsend in that regard. Moving on to the fight, the 3D background surprisingly worked well with the sprites. Lex and Doom's banter was exactly what I wanted out of them. Both are self-centered egotistical maniacs, so naturally they would take the time to tell their opponent exactly what they're using to beat the shit out of them. The two-dimensionalizer and the time bomb helped add some variety to the fight. The hand-drawn elements were implemented well and looked fantastic. I like the fight starting with the Doom and Lex bots, only to transition into the fight proper. The foot dive spam was a treat to watch, and Doom using the rocks that he used to finish Vader was a nice callback. The Superman line was great, and I appreciated the callback to Man of Steel with Lex's combo. I also enjoyed the subtle bits of the fight like Doom's hand when he points in this shot. Doom pulling a literal Captain Ginyu on Lex was great, and I've seen people meme Lex's scream at the end, but I personally don't think it was that bad. And the finisher was, quite frankly, bloody fantastic. Great use of the sprite, and the whole motion flowed so well. Doom's ending line, while a bit confusing, like seriously, what was he referring to? Was he referring to Superman's powers, the mother box, or just Lex in general? But the line still works, and the ending shot was cool. The ending analysis made sense, and I agree with the results. The ending joke was also just wonderful. No, it fucking wasn't, you fucking bamboo-eating bitch. Shut it, you. You don't show up until the second act. Anyway, overall, I'd give the episode an 8 out of 10. Solid episode, with a few flaws, one or two cringy jokes, a few less than stellar animation errors, but nothing significant is holding it back for me. And while I would have personally preferred they use a different returning character, and if they had to do Marvel and DC fights, I would have definitely preferred a different episode, but the fights still met my expectations, and at least we got the Marvel vs. DC out of the way early on. That's also three of the confirmed combatants done as well. Bruh, we discussed this. Second act. Does keeping the audience in suspense mean nothing to you? Well, we're in the second act right now. Well, uh, as you surely have noticed by now, I'm not alone for this one. Both Shark and Dip will be joining me for this prediction. Introduce yourself, guys. No. Say something funny, you fucks. <laughs> Don't read the fucking script. <laughs> I will read this damn script. Word for word. I just leave it open to you to say whatever the hell you want. <laughs> That's how you, you introduce me with me reading the script. You got me in this lore as a cowboy police officer. I don't want to hear shit. Well, with that recap done, on to Heihachi vs. Geese. The theme of this episode is bad fathers who both happen to be video game bosses from two iconic fighting game series. Though both of them also have sons that ultimately play a role in their defeat, and they both have a tendency to fall off high places. Plus the fact they were both in Tekken 7 and Smash. Fighting games is the theme this time, so I thought, why not invite our local fighting game expert, Dip? Thanks for having me. Okay, then why am I here? Well, Dip is more a straight man to my everyman, so I figured we needed some comic relief to spice things up. Hey now, I can be funny. Funny looking. Hey, listen, I'll throw you out this window. That'll be pretty damn funny. Anyway, let's get to discussing Heihachi. Heihachi being one of Tekken's big bads naturally has a lot of power to back up his ambition. Heihachi's main fighting style is a hardened form of Dotokan Karate. Heihachi's version is all about raw power and delivering devastating force, though his fighting style can be somewhat lacking in variety. Heihachi can channel Chi to increase his own physical strength and endurance. Heihachi is also roughly 50 to 70 years old, so he has decades worth of fighting experience. Heihachi can generate electricity with his fist and can stun his opponents, leaving them paralyzed. Where Heihachi really shines is his feats, however. Heihachi has bested Kazumi in devil form and beat his son Kazuya in two separate tournaments. He has survived a fight with Kazuya in devil form, fought Akuma, survived the raging demon, and he has fought multiple Jack-4 and Jack-6 style robots. He survived an explosion that set him flying for miles, caught a bullet with his teeth, caught a throwing axe with his teeth, and then ate it. He should also probably scale to Jin's previous death battle feats of flying out of orbit at Mach 32. Heihachi has also survived falling into a ravine. 
He likely scales to Kazuya's volcano feet and the AK robot feet, putting him around 100 megatons of power. He also finds the time to take an out of shape, smelly, and ultimately worthless bear like a panda and trains them to become seasoned fighters instead of a fat, lazy waste of space. You wanna finish that sentence? Well, why shouldn't I finish that sentence? Well, you see, that's the world champion you're talking to. Bearing all that in mind, Heihachi did die when he was thrown into a volcano, and giving him full scaling to the Devil Gene users is not really reasonable. So while Heihachi certainly scales to some of their feats, his true max stats are likely much less impressive. Geese in Fatal Fury was an interesting research experience, because quite frankly the series is massively under-researched when it comes to death battle. The Death Battle wiki is rather empty, and Fatal Fury has some rather ridiculous claims. Galaxy level king of fighters, I think that's the best joke we've said yet. Ignoring how blatantly inaccurate that claim is, king of fighter characters should generally fall somewhere from island level to continental busting on the high end. Geese is certainly no exception. He scales to Terry, who is capable of destroying a factory and moving at Mach 2 speeds. Geese also has a tendency to fall off of buildings and volcanoes and the tier list. Geese in combat focuses on counterattacks and capitalizes on an enemy making mistakes. Geese, similar to Terry, can manipulate his chi to create energy waves, giant blasts, and multiple flashy super moves. Geese can use his chi to give himself some type of hyper awareness that allows him to see his surroundings. Geese is also 43 years old by the end of the series and has two active decades of combat experience. Fatal Fury's scaling is kind of hard to quantify, but based off what Death Battle Fan and Wiki has said, and what the Death Battle Discord told me, Geese should scale to megaton to gigaton levels of power. Geese scales to a laser which could destroy the Earth's surface, but we've heard that feat might be bugged. He also scales to some storm or something. In King of Fighters, the, for, for just your information, the most accurate scaling I've ever seen of like the max power of somebody, Terry is able to power wave, which is one of his average moves, mm -hmm. all the way through a forest and destroy all of it. True, so building, and so like city level actually makes perfect sense. He, he does that like on, like when he's at max power. And then he fights somebody about three times stronger than that. So, and he wins. So, okay, that scaling kind of makes some sense. And so he just wins. leaves this And end? Terry's a secondary character in KOF. Wait, you know, like, why? Who's the primary? Well, Ke Terry's the main character in the King of Fighters game, well, in the Fatal Fury games, and he's like a secondary character in KOF? It's weird. It, it is weird. It, right. It's a whole weird thing. And anyway. the only thing I've seen Terry do other than that in the, the main thing is he's, he's able to kick... A big giant piece of rebar, not rebar. You know those giant iron girders that they make. Oh, you mean eye beams? Eye beams. He's able to kick one of those and send it flying about 20 feet. Okay, that's so impressive. that's pretty good. Terry fought Clone Zero and Geese scales to him, and he also scales to Akula, destroying a satellite. Other KOF fighters have similar feats. I'm sorry, everyone. I don't really know how to pronounce this word, so I'm gonna do my best here. Gonitz has a 94 megaton feat. Shermie has a 38 megaton feat. And Yashiro's feet is stupidly powerful, sitting at a 5.58 gigatons. Geese beat all three of these characters, so the scaling is justified. Geese scales to KOF fighters, dodging lasers, so he should be at least around massively hypersonic speeds. Lastly, Geese, like Terry, has a female form. Wait, hold the fuck up. Hmm, I might have a daddy kink now. Would this technically be a mommy kink, then? I hate both of you. Well, that happens. Anyway, Geese's durability should scale to his other offensive stats, so with that being said, that's all we have for Geese. Final thoughts, boys. Let's go. With Geese being stated as being stronger, more than likely faster, much more durable, 5.52 gigaton feet, and also being more versatile, because, you know, power wave and all that. He doesn't have power wave, does he? I hate something so much. He, he actually, like shoots like energy bus saws. He learned from the same master as Terry Bogart. Oh yeah, okay. Kung Fu Ru, right? Yes. We should mention I have never played either of these games, just so we know. Comedic effect, am I right? Yes, basically. Anyway, so, with all that being said, even though Heihachi has much more experience than Geese, I have to say Geese is going to take this, because if we are factoring that Gigaton thing, Heihachi is just dead. Even if we're factoring in the Demon Gene thing. Based off what I've seen, I definitely agree with Dark Shark's take. 
Geese is likely stronger. Again, assuming the Gigaton feat is accurate. If it's not, this is a whole other ball game. But I, even if it's not, I still think that Geese ultimately has this. He not only scales to Terry, who is arguably even stronger than what Death Battle listed him previously. He is definitely faster. He's more durable. He has more versatility overall. And Heihachi, while impressive, it is unrealistic to give Heihachi full scaling to the Devil Gene users. Even then, at best, we can give him 100 megatons, which, assuming that Geese's feet is accurate, he is light years above that. So ultimately, for this episode, I'm rooting for Geese. I myself am also going to be rooting for Geese. Now, I will say, admittedly, it is very hard to be 100% sure on Geese's feet, because there's just not a lot of research done about this from anywhere as we've said before. But from what I've experienced personally in both the King of Fighters games and the movies, which are canon, Geese has the potential to be stronger than Heihachi, so I believe it is a safe bet to assume that the, if they do their research right, Death Battle will make Geese stronger in this scenario. So my vote, once again, is Geese, Howard. All right, with all that being said, what do you guys think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Are you going goose for geese? Or are you going hay for hey Hachi? With all that being said, this has been Tenton, Dark Shark, and Diff. We will see you guys next time. Peace.